Hey guys, welcome back to Seven Wax channel. You are watching HLMS, one of the most detailed Gundam lore series. Today, we are finishing off the GATX line. So this episode will be covering the Aegis Gundam from Gundam Seed. Before we start this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to it. Turn on your CC sub, grab your snacks and drinks. Let's go. For the detailed information of the G project, please head back to the Jewel Gundams episode for a full explanation. Aegis Gundam is one of the five original G project Gundams, belonging to the X300 series and designated as a commander use MS. As such, there's a special equipment on the head to to improve communication and search range. Just like all the G-Project's Gundams, Aegis is equipped with PS Armor. When PS Armor is activated, Aegis will turn into bright red scheme, granting it the highest defense capabilities out of all colors. Because it's a commander use Gundam, the X300 series is not just developed for commander use, it's also the only GATX Gundam that has the ability to transform. The tactic of Aegis is to use its high mobility to circle around the battlefield, then transform into enemy attack mode and perform a hit and run. Since the whole tactic requires speed and position. The Aegis is very hard to pilot, so it required an experienced and high-skilled pilot to use MS, MA Cruise Mode, and MA Attack Mode to achieve Aegis Max performance. Speaking of different forms of Aegis, we'll break it down one by one. Starting from Aegis MS form, considering that the tactic consists of high mobility battle with the flexible uses between MS and MA, the main thrust of Aegis is not from the backpack as they are just support thrusters. Instead, the main thrust is from the large movable binders, which are the side skirts. During MS mode, the weapons are simpler to make sure Aegis can take full advantage of its mobility for self-defense, intercepting missiles, or damaged lightly armored parts. There's a pair of Egerstein 75mm multi-barrel seaweeds. During melee battles, Aegis can emit a total of 4 beam sabers from its feet and 4 arms. The beam sabers can be used in both MS or MA form. For ranged battles, Aegis has a 16mm high energy beam rifle and a shield with anti-beam coating to defend itself. The MA form have two modes. Cruise mode is essentially for the Aegis to fly around with high speed. But the funny thing is despite the MA form contains an aerodynamic design, it cannot fly alone on Earth. Once the four claws opened, it's changed into the MA attack mode. The claws on the tip can still generate beam sabers for a drill attack. The MA attack mode will also allow Aegis to grab onto a target. Then it can either just capture the target back to base or use direct attacks to destroy the target. The most powerful weapon on Aegis is Skiller 518mm multi phrase energy cannon. This weapon can only be accessed during MA attack mode. It is very powerful as it can easily shoot through multiple MS or a battleship. However, the downside of this weapon is the high energy consumption. High enough that Aegis will easily run out of energy if it uses this cannon constantly. On 20th of July, CE-71, Aegis Gundam was completed and stored in Heliopolis, but the information of G Project was leaked and Cruiser team hijacked 4 out of 5 Gundams. Aslan Salah successfully stole the Aegis Gundam and it became his personal Gundam. Despite Aegis being extremely complicated to pilot, Aslan managed to achieve some good results with the Aegis Gundam. Aslan refused to fight Kira Yamato at the beginning, so he captured the Strike Gundam at one point without killing Kira, but Kira was soon saved by Mula Flaga's Mobius Zero. Later, during the Egg Fleet Orbit Battle, Aegis once again showed a huge advantage when it comes to high-speed combat, as Aegis Gundam shot down a lot of battleships along with the Mobius. The four Gundam successfully broke through the defensive line of the Egg Fleet, while Egg Fleet used themselves as a shield. Our Angel successfully descends to Earth, both Duel and Buster were pulled by Earth's gravity, and Cruiset ordered Aegis and Blitz to retreat. Sometimes later, Aegis and Blitz were sent to Earth to join Duel and Buster. First, the Zyla team was formed. They continued to pursue our Angel, and both sides met again near Orb's territory twice. During the second battle, Strike Gundam used all three Striker packs and split the team apart, defeating them one by one. Then, Soul Strike jumped down and continued attacking Aegis. The battle turned into a 1v1 between Strike and Aegis. Very soon, Aegis ran out of power, and Nico was trying to protect Arthur. Aslan, which ended up Nico ran directly into the sword and got killed. After Nico's death, Aslan finally made up his mind and decided to kill Kira. Aslan first destroyed multiple weapons on the Art Angel, then fought Strike Gundam on the island. After a lot of slashes and clashing, Tolo came to support Kira, which ended up with Tolo's Skygrubspa being destroyed when Aegis threw the shield. Both Kira and Aslan wanted revenge. They fought against each other and eventually Aegis caught Strike Gundam. Right before the final blow, Aegis was powered down again. Aslan had no choice but to 2 AX. Kira and Strike Gundam. Resulted both Aegis and Strike were damaged beyond repair after the 2 AX7. In the end, Kira was saved by Law Gui, and Aslan got away from the explosion. In the Gundam Seed RE manga, Aegis received a set of atmospheric equipment after the team landed on Earth. First, Aegis new equipment finally allowed it to fly along in the atmosphere, as the side skirts are now wing binders. It also has a railgun mounted on each binder. Secondly, the shield on Aegis is now equipped with three beam saber emitters. Thirdly, 
the Skiller 580 mm multi-phase energy cannon is now usable during MS Mode 2. Lastly, the beam rifle got a huge upgrade, which the size is increased as well. During MA Mode, the beam rifle can dock with the cannon to shoot a destructive beam as well. As the slow and Gundams became a huge threat in the battlefield, Earth Alliance cooperated with Asriel Congolorant, using the first generation GATX series as the base. The second generation of the X300 series was born, Raider Gundam. Unlike Aegis, Raider has improved flight abilities and now capable of flying independently in the atmosphere. The OS was rewritten and improved compared to the first generation. It also uses TP armor to reduce energy consumption and extend the operation time. The basic concept is still the same as Aegis, which is using its high mobility to hit and run and break enemies' formation. Compared to Aegis, Raider's frame was further reinforced and the transformation was simplified, making the Raider's transformation between MS and MA smoother. During MS mode, the stability in the atmosphere is better than Aegis, despite the poor MS mode atmospheric capabilities of both machines. Raider can position itself better in the air with the thrusters on the backpack, wings, waist, and lower legs. As I said, Raider's MS mode cannot fight well in the atmosphere, so it will mostly fly around with the MA mode then quickly transform into MS mode to attack. Another difference between Raider and Aegis is that Raider's MA mode is also a sub-flight lifter unit, which means another MS can stand on its back and Raider can carry them around. To make sure Raider has equal offensive power in both modes, it doesn't rely on one powerful attack like the Aegis. Both MS and MA has specific weapons to help the mid-range battle. Unlike Aegis, there's no strongest weapon but divide it equally. There is a Zorn 100mm energy cannon mounted in the mouth. It's usable in both modes. Although the output is not as strong as Skiller 580mm multi-phase energy cannon, it's still powerful enough to shoot through at MS. On the right forearm, there's a dual 52mm hypervelocity shield cannon. It's basically a shield with built-in double-barreled cannon. There's two firing modes, either semi-auto or full-auto, which means it's flexible during mid-range battles. The melee weapon is not limited anymore. There is a Mjolnir spherical breaker for melee or surprise attacks. While Raider can just use this weapon to smash the enemies, the main purpose of it is to catch enemies off guard and launch the hammer into their face. Since the hammer depended on the acceleration to create impact power, there's a thruster on the hammer to make sure Sure, it has the acceleration that it needs. With enough acceleration, the hammer can even damage PS armor. The Mjolnir is launched through an anti-beam coated macromolecular cable, so it means the cable is hard to cut. However, the hammer itself is not covered with anti-beam coating, so it can be destroyed by any beam weapon. Additionally, Mjolnir can be used defensively by spinning it rapidly to block attacks. During MA mode, it has more weapons than Aegis, so it's less predictable. There's a pair of Ahura Master short-range plasma cannon in the middle of the claws. It can fire normal shots or rapid fire in a short range, but it was never shown in the anime. Once Raider is close enough to the target, the claws can generate a short blade and quickly ram into the target. There's a pair of M2 M3 76mm machine gun mounted in the shoulders, only usable in MA mode. On the MA mode's nose, you'll see a M417 80mm machine gun. It's mainly used for restricting enemies' movements, but it's powerful enough to damage any non-PS armor MS. On 15th of June, CE71, the Three second generation GATX Gundams were first launched and participated in the Battle of Orb. Raider Gundam was piloted by a bio CPU, Clotho Burr. With his high mobility advantage, Raider almost shot down Freedom in a 2v1. Arslan decided to support and the tables have turned. With the cooperation between Freedom and Justex, the druggies were slowly losing and later they were fighting each other. As the medicine's limit time was reached, the druggies retreated. In the next day, the druggies came back and fought Freedom again. Kira was in disadvantage because he got triple teamed. Very soon, Arslan came and saved Kira again as they both got over their grudge. Under the pressure from both Freedom and Justice, the three Gundams retreated out of energy issues, and the remaining orb forces were retreated to Kaguya. Later, Archangel and Kusanagi was launching to space through the mass driver. The Dragis show up again and attempted to stop the launching. Freedom and Justice successfully protected Kusanagi. Kira and Aslan defended the Kusanagi and used the full burst attack to make the Dragis back off. The battle ended with Kusanagi successfully launching to space. Lord Uzumi self-destructed both Monogatari and mass driver, leaving EA unable to resupply the lunar base. After EA found another way to launch to space, the three Gundams were assigned to Dominion. The Free Ship Alliance and Dominion crew met again at the Mendelu area, which both sides fought again. Although the Dragis didn't perform very well, but Raider Gundam did destroy Freedom's left wing and its half-melted head. The battle ended with the Free Ship Alliance shooting down Zap's battleships and escaping the battlefield. Justice and Buster covered Freedom and brought Kira back to the ship. Dominion rescued Filet and Azalai 
Google got the data of n g e m a Cancellor after receiving the data of n g e m a Cancellor. EA revived the nuclear technologies and decided to attack Boaz as a start. The Peacemaker team successfully nuked Boaz under the support fire from the Druggies. Later, the Peacemaker team was sent to destroy plant colonies. The Druggies were once again protecting the nuclear warheads. Right before the nukes hit the colonies, both Free Ship Alliance and Zaft forces stopped the attack. The second battle of Yakindyoi was officially started. As Forbidden, Calamity, and Dominion were all destroyed, Raider was the only one left, with little energy and an unstable pilot. Izaku borrowed the Hyper Impulse Long Range Sniper Rifle on Buster. Just right before Duel ran out of power, Raider was shot down by Izaku. Did you know that Raider Gundam is not the first successor of Aegis? Raider Gundam was manufactured in a rush, so it can participate the Battle of Orb. The original successor plan was Raider Full Spec. Unlike Raider Gundam, Full Spec is not designed for hit and run, but for long range aerial assault purpose, as long as longer operation time as it will always stay up in the air. However, I cannot find whether Full Spec have TP armor or not, because the official record doesn't show that it has TP armor. But in the Seed Destiny Astray manga, it's hinted that Full Spec has TP armor too, as it can conduct. Atmospheric re entry by itself. The general output of full spec is slightly better than Raider, as the main engine is a turbojet engine and has higher output compared to the Raider's engine. The sub wings also have ramjet engines to work along with the main engine. On the wings, full spec have leading edge flaps and winglets to help the aerodynamics. Compared to Raider Gundam, full spec doesn't have thrusters on the legs. The mouth cannon is gone, it doesn't include Mjolnir and the shield cannon. Instead, full spec's weapons are all ballistic to extend the operation time, but as the war kept going, Full spec was equipped with beam weapons too. I will introduce the weapon from early type to late type. The only weapon that's shared between Raider and Full spec is the M2 M3 76mm machine gun on the MA MOS shoulders. Since the shield cannon is not included, the handheld range weapon is the GAU 8 M2 52mm machine gun. The late type can choose between the machine gun or beam rival. The claws were first equipped with M20 20mm claw machine gun. Then later, it was equipped the same Ahura Monster short range plasma cannon as the Raider Gundam. During MA mode, each shoulder can equip one AIM-957F King Cobra infrared guided missile. The major difference on the full spec is the sub wings. It will be carried by Raider full spec using its claws. It has multiple purposes such as improving travel range and flight abilities, which can be used as a landing board in any environment. It has hard points to store different weapons, capable of space flights and battles. It has an atmospheric re-entry pod and it can be used as a ramming weapon. The sub wings hard points can carry a beam Rifle, 52mm machine gun, infrared guided missile, propellant tanks, auxiliary engine, and several different weapons. The sub wings also allows the pilot to take off easily, which means full spec can directly depart from the ocean or even vertically from the ground. Although full spec was the original plan of Raider Gundam, it turns out that Raider Gundam has a way better performance. After the production of Raider, a limited number of Raider full spec was mass produced. One of the earliest battle records was the Operation 88, in which one of the full spec was piloted by EAS. Edward Harrelson. The battle ended with EA successfully captured the Carpentaria base. After the CE-71 war, Edward defected to United States of South America. He took his Soul Calamity and one full spec with him. Since EA treated him as a traitor, they sent three full specs to kill Edward. Edward quickly shot down a full spec and the other two retreated. Later, in order to stop the missile attack towards the country, Edward decided to use full spec to attack the missile base in space. However, the missile attack was a trap. Morgan Chevalier lured Edward into space so he can use his advantage to kill Edward. Then Morgan pushed Edward into the gravity well and full spec was about to be burned to ash. But Edward used the Junior 7's wreckage and barely survived through the re-entry. After he landed on Earth, the full spec was damaged beyond repair and assumed to be abandoned. One of the full spec was sold to Londo Mina Sahuku by Muda Azailu. You can see it in the Ameno Milashila. Full spec was also seen during the Battle of Heaven's Base. But since full spec was already so outdated, it was easily destroyed by Legend Gundam. Other than EA, Zaf was trying to expand the idea and create a better Aegis. Different than the EA's thinking, Zaft believed that the complex transformation on Aegis will perform better if the MS size is bigger. So they took the opposite step and decided to enlarge the transformation structure by two times. The result is Regenerate Gundam. The message of this name is God's oath connected to man. It became a testament. It's a providence that man reincarnate and regenerate again as a god. Regenerate Gundam is one of the biggest Gundams in the CE world, but theoretically, the enlarged size does increase its performance. Because the size is so huge, 
the transformation is smooth and able to expand the usage of the transformation frame. Regenerate is more than just an enlarged transformable MS. The features of this Gundam is exactly like its name. It will regenerate again and again. The reason of the regeneration is because the Gundam is designed with modular body system, which means there are seven modules to form the complete Gundam. The seven modules are core unit, which is the backpack, chest unit, waist unit, and four limbs unit. All the modules are replaceable except the core unit. So as long as the core unit is still functionable, Regenerate can keep fighting because the mothership can just send new parts out for replacement. Well, what if the replacements were all destroyed? Here comes the core unit's magic. Since the core unit contained the cockpit and jammer canceler nuclear reactor and the lightcraft propulsion system, so the core unit can be either an escape port after Regenerate is destroyed, or it could find an MS and forcefully dock with the MS, thus hijacking it and fighting again. But the hijack is quite unpractical because the core unit can only hijack MS with the striker pack-like joint. For example, some of the easy hijack targets will be M1 Astray, Gundam Astray series, Strike Gundam, 105 Dagger, etc. As I just mentioned in the core unit part, because Regenerate have a nuclear reactor and Anjama canceler, the PS armor activation time is basically unlimited. There's a few settings that I need to go through before introducing the rest of the features. So let me give you a bit of background on why Regenerate and Testament is not as famous as Justice, Freedom, and Providence. Regenerate Gundam is piloted by the commander of the Genesis Alpha, Ash Gray. Not only is Genesis Alpha a top tier military secret. Even Ash Gray is a special forces pilot that especially loves to use excuses to do dirty work and enjoys the hunting and killing. The Genesis that we saw in the anime is not the first unit. Genesis was originally an enhancing equipment for those ships or MS that equipped with lightcraft propulsion system. As for the Regenerate Gundam, Genesis Alpha would shoot a gamma ray laser, then charge the propulsion system and ignite it. After the whole charging and ignition is complete, it will generate an explosive burst of speed, which this burst of speed will allow Regenerate to travel further and faster. Since Genesis Alpha and Regenerate Gundam are secrets, Regenerate is equipped with Mirage Colloid stealth system to prevent being seen while traveling, thus keeping Genesis Alpha existence as secret. Just like Aegis, Regenerate have three modes to help its combat, which is MS mode, MA cruise mode, and MA attack mode. During MS mode, it doesn't have fancy weapons, but they are powerful. Regenerate's defense is good because the PS armor has no limitations, thanks to the nuclear reactor. But if needed, the side of the core unit have sub arms that can deploy a mixed ship shift, shield, and block incoming attacks. Similar to Aegis, Regenerate have beam sabers on the limbs. These white pieces on the limbs are the beam saber emitters. The beam sabers on Regenerate are not like regular beam sabers, but it's the same MAX200 beam sword on Meteor. Additional note, the shoulders need to rotate in order to use the beam sword. The only handheld range weapon is long beam rifle. This rifle is extremely long compared to any other MS used rifle. Because it's longer and bigger, a standard shot from this rifle can easily melt away a couple MS. Furthermore, the output of this rifle is adjustable. At maximum output, this rifle is powerful enough to one-shot a space fortress. If Regenerate is damaged and needed replacement parts, all modules have individual mono-eye, unknown number of beam guns, missiles, and MMI GAU-2 pickers, 76mm seaweeds. The replacement parts are hard to shot down when they are activated because they don't lack self-defense. However, it's not confirmed whether those weapons in the modules are still usable or not after combination or not. Moving on to the MA mode, the MA mode is extremely large compared to the MAs during that era. Since most factions don't have the data of Regenerate, so it's often mistaken as Battleship. Plus, because Regenerate Gundam and its pilot must act secretly, so Regenerate will often travel with Mirage Colloid stealth system on. Just like Aegis, Regenerate can open the claws to capture the target, or use the four beam swords to attack. Unlike Aegis, Regenerate doesn't have a cannon in the middle of the MA, but the output is so scary that Regenerate can just crush the target after the capture. The MA attack mode is different than Aegis. While Aegis is just open the claws and shoot the cannon, Regenerate will transform into a four-legged fixed point fort. The claws are pointing down which means it can be used like an anchor to stabilize the firing progress. In other words, the attack mode can be used on Earth and Asteroid Areas too. The attack mode can be used simultaneously with the stealth system, but since Ash Gray doesn't like to hide to kill, so he never uses the attack mode and just kill in front of the target's face. Another small detail during attack mode, the subarms will hold the rifle which means the shooting is controlled through the subarms too. After Genesis Alpha was constructed to prevent the facility from being attacked and taken. Zaft constructed Regenerate and Testament in the Genesis Alvars factories. Zaft's chairman, Patrick Sala, gave the commander position and privileges to Ash Gray, which means he can choose who can pilot Regenerate and Testament. Regenerate became Ash's personal Gundam. His first mission was to hunt 
and kill anyone who joined the client faction. He found out that the junk guild ship Rehome was the one provided supply to the internal. As he was tracking Rehome's location, he interrupted Londo Minasahaku's testing of her asteroid gold frame Amatsumina. Regenerate easily destroyed Amatsumina's legs, then he moved on to the next location. Meanwhile, Rehome broke through the defense forces of Zaft. Ash despised the forces that let Rehome break through. He thinks they are useless, so he used the long beam rifle and shot the entire base and fleet. Regenerate cloaked herself and caught up to Rehome. Rehome was attacked and Law have to fight Ash. Law did cut the regenerate, but the parts kept coming back and regenerate, destroyed the power loader and red frame's left arm. Right before Law was about to be killed, Gene Carey came out with his M1 Astray and stored the regenerate Gundam. Unfortunately, regenerate easily grabbed the M1 Astray. Regenerate then retreated because of a thick signal, thanks to an unknown person that hacked Ash's channel. Back to Rehome, Serpent Tail joined Rehome and red frame got a power up from Gene Carey. While Gene's M1 Astray and Elijah's Gene was battling against regenerate, Guy found the location of Genesis Alpha and successfully destroyed all Regenerate's replacement parts. On the other hand, Power Red used the 150 Garbera Strict and cut off some of the Regenerate's parts. When Ash tried to call the replacement parts, he realized that the modules were all destroyed. Ash was trying to contact Zaf's forces to support him, but the signals in that area were cut off by Kenneth Lucini. Ash was trying to hijack Powered Red with the core unit, but Act reverse control it, which caused the Regenerate's core unit to malfunction. Law ripped the core unit it off and used Red Flame Punch, causing the core unit to drift to the EA's forces jurisdiction. Ash was captured and brainwashed into an extended. He was forced to work with the clan and became the pilot of Testament Gundam. The core unit of Regenerate became the backpack of Proto Saver Plus 11, which I'll cover in the Saver episode. After the CE-71 war, EA started to collaborate with Action Industries. The Action project was started and Aegis is included in the project. First, Action remanufactured Aegis Gundam. The remanufactured version has zero difference compared to the original, except that Aegis is now equipped with VPS armor. Action believed that Aegis transformation can do better, and thus increasing the capabilities in all environments. Based on the Aegis data and structure, Action Industries developed the Russell Aegis. The AA in the model number stands for Advanced Acceleration. Instead of splitting the MS and MA modes rows, Action decided to make both modes flexible. The flexible idea came with two new modes, which the modes are there to get rid of the flaws on Aegis. Aegis has a few your problems when it's in MS mode while it can fight really well in space. It needs a ghoul to help its flight once Aegis is fighting in the atmosphere. Even if it changed to MA mode, Aegis is still unable to perform independent flight. Actel noticed that neither MS or MA mode can truly make the Aegis shine while it's in the atmosphere. So they added a flight mode. The flight mode is when the wing binders are open and positioned over the shoulders. Although the flight abilities and speed are not as great as MA cruise mode, but at least Russell Aegis don't need to stand on a ghoul to fly around on Earth. As I mentioned, at the Aegis section. The most powerful weapon on the Aegis is Skiola, 518mm multi phrase beam cannon. However, despite this weapon being powerful, it cannot be accessed unless Aegis is in MA attack mode. Action's technicians changed the design of the cannon, which now is accessible in MS mode too. All Russell Aegis needs to do is to flip the chest plate up. From that, the shooting mode is born. But it does more than just shooting. Action used the data of Forbidden Gundam and added a pair of magnetic field generator on the wing binders. Just like Forbidden, Russell Aegis just cannon shot can bend and change directions. As for the MS mode weapons, it's still the same weapons from Aegis, which is the 16mm beam rifle and beam sabers on the limbs. There are three different MA modes. The MA cruise mode and MA attack mode are the same just like the Aegis. The MA mode difference between Aegis and Russell Aegis is simple. The latter can fly in the atmosphere independently while gaining faster acceleration and speed. I found a new MA mode of Russell Aegis, which is a similar four-legged MA mode like Regenerate Gundam, but I can't find that form in manga or any image form. Since Russell Aegis was further enhanced, the pilot's skills must be top tier. Phantom Pain assigned Emilio Bodrick to pilot Russell Aegis. Russell Aegis was first deployed along with Nettle Blitz and swept an unknown soft base. Later, Phantom Bank sent out Russell Aegis and Nettle Blitz to hunt down the Martians. Ernst Brahin hit the provocation towards Emilio and got inside of his head. Russell Aegis was soon defeated by Turn Delta. After the defeat, Nettle Blitz and Russell Aegis were both retrieved by the Junk Guild. They found that Russell Aegis was meant to be nuclear powered as Law found that there is a space for nuclear reactor. Action Project is not only improving on the first five Gundams of the GATX line. The chief engineer, Vivi, 
developed and improved second generation GATX Gundams, which is Rot Forbidden, Blau Calamity, and Jelp Raider. Rot Forbidden is in the Blitz episode, and Blau Calamity is in the Busters episode. You can go back to check their histories out. Jelp Raider uses the Raider full spec as the base, but for appearance and parts, it's mostly from Raider Gundam. Just like the original intention, Jelp Raider will be attacking along with Blau Calamity and cover it. Raider Gundam is just like Aegis, a high speed hit and run MS, but despite the high mobility, the firepower is really lacking. VV came up with an idea of keeping the mobility while increasing the firepower, which is adding more weapons and the additional large output thrusters on the legs. The additional thrusters on the legs comes with wings, which those wings will help to stabilize the MA mode. Since Gel Raider's position is to disrupt enemies' attacks, it's equipped with specific weapons to do so. Despite the base being Raider full spec, literally every weapon is from Raider Gundam. The same weapons from Raider Gundam includes Sorn 100mm energy cannon in MS mode, Ahura Master short range plasma cannon, M417 18mm machine gun, and M2 M3 76mm machine gun in the MA mode. The improved weapons are all based on those from the Raider Gundam, with a bit of weapons from another Gundam. The shield cannon is still the same just like Raider, but there's a pair of beam cannon on the side of the shield cannon. It's unsure on how these beam cannons are made, but it seems to be derived from the ones on Lago. The Mjolnir is now called Super Mjolnir Super Spherical Breaker, which does the same thing like the one on Raider, but the hammer is bigger and the spikes are sharper. To increase the firepower during MA mode, Vivi modified the backpack and fit the redesigned IWSP weapons on it. Just like the Action version of IWSP, the top barrel with the scope is the 150mm railgun. The one below it is 105mm cannon. As I previously mentioned in Buster and Blitz episode, the improved second generation Gundams are equipped with AI-80 and trial system to cooperate better. Gel Raider first appeared during a simulation, assisting Blau Calamity to fight against Strike Noir. Later, the three Gundams went into space. They interfered, a battle between Destiny Impulse R and Astray Refrain. The battle ended with Law getting thrown out of the cockpit, Act being taken back to Action facilities, and Destiny Impulse R getting away with his silhouette. One day, a large group of D-Adagas attacked the Action's factory with the command from Destiny Impulse R. The three Gundams successfully held back the D Adaga force with the trial system and AI-80. Destiny Impulse R was destroyed by Astray Red Dragon and Astray Turn Red at the end of the battle. One week later, Rock Forbidden, Blau Calamity and Gel Raider were all destroyed by Astray Red Dragon, earning Law his ticket to challenge VV. Thanks for watching this episode, you just don't have any MP or Librarian version, so it's easier, I guess. Yes, we finished the GATX series and if you would like to do some revisions, go to my channel's playlist and you'll find the HLMS playlist. Since the GATX series are finished, the next C topic will be the nuclear Gundams. I finished Regenerate in this episode, so I think there's four more to explain. If you like this episode, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell next to it. It gives me the motivation to do better. My Discord link is in the description along with the donation. I need some rest, so I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.